just let yourself go. Just focus on the palm of your hand. Hypnotherapy is used by over half a million people in Britain. Just imagine your eyelids becoming heavy. It's claimed it can make you thinner. Don't smoke. Stop you smoking. And just go deep and deep. Do almost anything. <laughs> Accessing the powers of your unconscious mind to increase the size and shape of your breasts. Marvellous. I set out to explore hypnotherapy. I've seen hypnosis in action. But can it really make us do anything? Should I believe what I see? Could it affect our health and behaviour? I've watched people as they set out with huge hopes, putting more trust in it than I could have imagined. Everything is being peeled off. It's not something I ever thought I'd try. This is my journey. This is me, Cathy Sykes, Professor of Sciences and Society at the University of Bristol. I've always found the idea of being hypnotised spooky, and to be honest, I didn't really know what it was. You hear that it involves our unconscious mind, whatever that is, and exposes hidden layers. What might a hypnotist find lurking beneath my surface? There's the Cathy Sykes that the world sees, and then there's a private Cathy Sykes um, that many fewer people see. Um, and then there's layers of Cathy that, you know, I gradually get to find out about as I get older. And, you know, I think it's a life's work finding out who you are. And so the whole idea that, you know, somebody might be able to reach parts of you that you can barely reach yourself. Mm, you know, you'd, um, you wouldn't want an audience. <laughs> In my work, I have to spend a lot of time being in control, so it's not something I hand over lightly. You know, I love dangerous sports and doing them in quite edgy ways. I like risk, but that's kind of playing with control a bit. The whole idea of one other person having control over me, what I'm doing, well, I'm not all that keen to try, really. I'm actually hoping I don't have to. <laughs> OK, we're going to start with this pretty blonde here. Madam, in a moment, I click my fingers twice, you'll stand up, you'll have this wonderful relaxed feeling, and you take off all your clothes. I wanted to start my investigation into hypnotherapy by looking at the one thing I am familiar with, stage hypnosis. I'd had a glimpse when I was a student, and now, as a slightly more sober adult, it made sense to start here. I don't know what to expect tonight. I'm hoping to be entertained. It'd be interesting to see if it has any sort of um, effect on me, maybe. I don't know what you're laughing at, because in a moment I clip my fingers three times and you'll have diarrhoea. <laughs> oh, there's, there's some there. There's posters everywhere for Michael McCoy. Comedy show, hypnotist, great. I will ask for volunteers, but I will ask for volunteers with new morals and new values to join me here on the stage, right? And would you like to go up? I could wait and I wouldn't. I don't believe you can't be hypnotised. And I, I firmly believe. Yeah. And you want to go up? And I want to prove to me that it, okay. someone can take over your mind. <laughs> I want to be hypnotised, but I'm a bit anxious as to what they will get me to do. And what would you like not to do? I'm not going to tell you because you're getting to do it. No, no, I don't know him. I've never met him before. Uh-huh. <laughs> And now, my friends, just concentrate. Concentrate now as you listen to the music, focusing on my voice, on the kind of one now. Squeeze your hands tighter and tighter and tighter. Squeeze your hands tighter and make the good connection. The way it seemed to work, the hypnotist invited them on stage, asked them to clench their hands, and then slowly counted them into a sort of trance. Squeeze your hands tighter and tighter and tighter, and the kind of six now, say it to yourself, my hands are locking, my hands are locking. Shake your hands, shake your hands, shaking, 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 16, 17, 18, and in the next count, if your hands are shaking, they will continue the shake until I release you, 19, 20. After 30 minutes, the effects seem to be dramatic.
We're going to go by motorbike. Three, two, one. Rev up your motorbike with your eyes closed. Going around a corner now. They seem to be following his every suggestion, no matter how crazy. Watch out for the bunny rabbit. Oh, it's really going for it now. Big finish here. Big finish. It was hilarious to watch. But I wasn't sure I actually believed it. Were they just putting it on? Give them all a big cheer as we make the way. That looked like an awful lot of fun. The thing that really surprised me, it seemed as though people just had no inhibitions. And that, that's why, you know, part of me thinks, well, they, they just wanted to perform anyhow. You're saying there's something more profound going on. No, no, definitely. I mean... Persuade me, persuade me. Everyone on stage wouldn't be on stage if they weren't a performer, okay. simply because, first and foremost, it's an entertainment show. So we've got to entertain the audience. But that doesn't take away from the fact that anyone on stage isn't hypnotised. You know, they're, they're totally hypnotised. But you cannot make somebody do anything against their own will. So you can't force me to do something I really don't want to no, do? No, no. Okay. Through the years of experience, it is easier for me now to gauge the people that want to be hypnotised. And did I strike you as somebody who wants to be hypnotised? Yes. Being in the audience was deeply entertaining. I didn't find myself wanting actually to be up there, although there is a part of me that's wanting to know how easily could I be hypnotised. Thinking about it, the thing that's puzzling me is how could something that seems to be about having a good night out have anything to do with health issues? Because hypnosis is what hypnotherapists use, and hypnotherapy is big business. Let's see. The NHS spend £5 million a year, private users, £34 million. Aggressiveness, anxiety, pain control. Improve your sport from bodybuilding to golf. Breast enlargement and reduction. The number of conditions it's supposed to treat is huge. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of heights, fear of crowds, allergies, asthma, high blood pressure, Migraines, improving memory, making decisions. I wonder if it's got anything about packing a bit less. A list like this seems just too good to be true. I wanted to see some actual hypnotherapy. Today's the day that I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to be hypnotised and hopefully just never want to smoke again. In Birmingham, West Midlands Police Force had just started providing hypnotherapy for the officers. With the national smoking ban just four days away, Constable Richard Beaumont was one of 150 prepared to risk being teased by his colleagues. Everybody said I'm going to be hypnotised and get a shout to go to a job and I'll end up stripping off naked in the car and squawking like a chicken, that sort of thing. Relaxation and calm flowing from the base of your spine up over your lower back and upper back and shoulders. That's right. She feels What's that calm. happening here is a world away from a stage show. Over your buttocks and thighs, your knees and calves. For the first 30 minutes, the therapist worked on the hypnotic induction, achieving the relaxed, trance like state. Going down and down and deeper and further, just like going down 10 steps into relaxation and rest. Then he started to make a series of powerful suggestions. And now I want you to think of what would be the worst outcome of continuing to smoke. Who that would affect, the devastation it would cause. Perhaps you could imagine that person or person stood by your grave and ask yourself who's responsible. I want you to hold that there for a moment, Richard. Freeze it and then store it away. And then I want you to think of a positive statement that lets you know you don't smoke. And I want you to say that out loud. I don't smoke. Well done. After about an hour, very gently, Richard was brought round. Start to move your fingers and hands and toes and feet. 
and in your own time you can open your eyes at 2.45 on the 27th of June 2007. How do you feel? I don't want to fag. Okay. Which I did before. Okay. What does that feel like, to kind of being able to say that? It's weird. Feels new. It's the first, yeah, it's the first time. Since I was a teenager, so yeah. Okay, good. Just one session was supposed to be enough. But would Richard really stop smoking? We'd follow this up. Next, I went to see another therapist at work, treating a behaviour millions of us want to change. Can you just put a hand together for Elliot Wall, please? This demonstration was designed to introduce Elliot Ward's two-day seminars. But if you're caught up on stage, the one session might be all you needed. Well, good evening. So tell me, who wants to lose weight? Tonight I'm going to show you some things about how you can make changes in your life. After an hour talking about eating habits, he told us to hold out our hands and clench them tightly. <clears throat> It turns out that this together. is a way of testing who might respond fingers best to hypnosis. Look down at your two fingers. And as you look down at them, I want you to imagine a vice. I want you to imagine a vice becoming tighter and tighter, tighter and tighter. There you go. Isn't that weird? Tighter and tighter the whole time. Isn't that strange? Does anybody here not want to eat chocolate anymore? Would you like to come up here? Yeah. Have a seat. Okay. Just give me a hand. Okay. So all I want you to do is just look into my eyes. Just notice the change in focus. That's right. Just imagine. Again, I saw a hypnotic induction That's to achieve a relaxed trance-like relaxed, state. Deep. And then a series of powerful That's suggestions. Deeper and deeper relaxed. Good. <laughs> is this something that you really dislike eating? What is it? Corned beef. Corned beef. Ugh. Horrid. And like, if I was stuffing your mouth full of corned beef now, what would that be like for you? I'd urge. You'd urge. You, you mean you'd be sick? Yeah. Really heaving? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been sick and you swallowed it. That's quite unpleasant too, oh. right? Mm-mm-mm. So like this chocolate thing that you used to have, I want you to imagine starting to eat some chocolate now. And I want you to start smelling the chocolate and munching it, but as you do, I want you to start mixing it with the corned beef. That's right, each mouthful is like corned beef for you. Oh. And as you swallow it down with the corned beef... He encouraged beef, her to make this grisly association throat, over down, and over again. Sick. Sickly. Have some more chocolate, because that used to be nice for you. What's that like now? It's a taste of corned beef. A taste of corned beef. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you really want chocolate and 1 being you don't want it at all, what number does it represent for you? Oh, I don't want it at all. Are you sure you don't want any more? No. Excellent. So just come back and relax. Just open your eyes. Feel all right? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Good. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you don't want chocolate at all, what number do you represent now? 1. I don't want it. What, you don't want it at all? I don't want you it. You sure? I am sure. <laughs> Dairy milk. I mean, what's that like? No, I don't even want to smell it. You sure? You know, just smelling it, it's sticking out. I can feel it around my mouth. Thank you so much. You okay? Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Can I ask you a couple of questions yes, about that? It looks so surprising. It looks so amazing. You're kind of thinking, is that really happening? Do you know what? That's what I've always thought. That is exactly what I've always thought. And yes, it was. I just felt so relaxed, and I could hear myself sort of deep breathing, like I would be when I was asleep. But I could hear everything going on. I could, I could feel his touch on my on my arm. I can't explain it. It's just chance. To, uh, it worked. And are you going to eat chocolate again? No. You're sure? I feel positive. Yes, I really do feel positive. And um, the big telltale will be when I go home. <laughs> The trance thing is a bit weird. <laughs> it happens so quickly. That's the thing that's remarkable. But Nicola did seem genuinely affected. So what is this trance thing? Is it some special state of consciousness? Is it even for real? What do scientists make of it? The really weird thing for me 
watching all of that was when the people went into that trance state and they just seemed to go from sitting normally to being in a completely different zone. But the scientists don't, just don't agree about it. Some say it's a special state and the others say it isn't. Some say the trance stuff doesn't matter anyway. It's all down to the power of suggestion. Frankly, I don't know what to think. I've come to Italy to meet a psychologist who has a thorough knowledge of the experiments looking into trance and suggestion. He's been working in a lab in Modena. From your perspective, how much do you think is kind of a component of suggestion and how much is, um, is it necessary to be in that trance? Well, that's one of the exciting things. That's been a big debate, an exciting area uh, over the last 50 years. And here's what we seem to know about it. Most of the people that can respond to suggestion in hypnosis usually report that they can respond to it also outside of hypnosis. Uh -huh. And this has been the dilemma. What is the role of hypnosis? Is there a hypnotic state at all? Maybe there isn't. Irving's experience has led him to doubt that trance plays a significant role. But he does believe there's a small proportion of people who are highly responsive to suggestion. What's been your experience of people who are highly suggestible? They're not gullible. They are intelligent. This is a person with a talent. It's a talent to change their experience and sometimes to change their experience in very profound ways. It was a seductive idea. I asked Irving what it might be like to be one of those highly suggestible people. You can hear the people talking in the background there. Maybe you don't want to hear them talking. No, I don't. We can get rid of them. Block them off. Just block them off. And if you have that capacity, you yeah. can do that. How do you feel about the temperature? It's Is it pressure. warm, cold? It's getting quite warm now. You could feel cooler. We could have a breeze. You could have a breeze if you like. We could decide, for example, that this building in front of us is actually a modern building. We could have it look like that. We could change the could color of it. Could we have the Guggenheim? <laughs> sure, we could have the Guggenheim. Anything you like, we could change the color of it. We could make it a gray building. We could make it Irving has been working with some of these suggestible people as part of an experiment. Just about to get to meet one of these highly suggestible people and get to see what's happening in his brain, which is kind of amazing. His name was Pelham. I'm going to ask you to do this twice. First time I'll ask you to do it in hypnosis. OK? All set? Yeah. Good. Let's begin then just... To demonstrate the theory that people can respond to suggestion alone without the trance, first Irving hypnotized Pelham and then suggested to him that he could add color to a black and white picture. OK. Open your eyes now. Look at the screen. Just see it as it is in shades of gray. But please don't try adding color to it until I ask you to do so. Now begin adding color to the pattern. Add color to it until you see it in full color, as if you were looking at a fully colored pattern. And let me know when you've succeeded in doing that by raising the index finger of your right hand. Good. How much color do you see now from zero, being no color at all, to 100%, which would mean full color? 85. 85%. Good. I'm going to bring you out of hypnosis now. Five, four, three, two, one. Open your eyes. Zero. OK, good. Feeling wide awake now? Yes. Normal wide awake state. It's normal to get, yes. Good. <laughs> then, once Pelham was completely alert, with no hypnosis, Irving suggested to Pelham that he could do the same thing again. Look at the pattern, see it as it actually is, in shades of grey. Don't add colour to it until I ask you to do so. Now begin adding colour to it. Add colour to it so that you actually see it in full colour, and let me know when you've succeeded in doing that by lifting the index finger of your right hand. Good. How much color do you see in the picture now? 70. 70 percent. Okay. Good. Thanks. It seemed bizarre. So the, the colors might like bright? Yeah, most of it was sort of as colored as I could get it. Uh, that one was uh, light yellow, mm -hmm. and that one's sort of pink. And does it surprise you? Uh, the first time it did, definitely. 
because it was quite easy as well. So something I expected to sort of struggle with, and it's forced to happen, but it was just sometimes I actually have to hold myself off and wait to be told to do it, otherwise it'll start happening anyway. In and out of hypnosis, Pelham said he saw a lot of colour in a black and white picture. This is consistent with the idea that trance is pretty much irrelevant and you can achieve almost the same results without it. Quite a lot of activity going on, not only in the back of the brain, but also... Irving then wants to see what was happening in the brains of Pelham and those like him, comparing them under hypnosis and then without it. Now, when did you get these results? I saw them yesterday morning, and I'm still excited about them. They're not what, have, what I expected. Parts of them are. Parts of them are absolutely not, and I'm as happy about the parts that I'm not, that I was not expecting as I am about the parts that I was expecting. It's often the case in science. Yeah. Okay, show me. Okay. First, Irving took me through what someone's brain looks like when they're being shown an image in colour for real. An area called the visual cortex lights up. Okay, so this is no suggestion, no hypnosis. This is just the way the just brain see, looks when it's seeing color. That's exactly, Great, got it. That's exactly yep. right. Okay, here is a composite image mm -hmm. of the brains of people who are adding color mm -hmm. under hypnosis. And what you'll see is that there's this area that's lit up. This is area of increased activation. Within the same area that we saw before. That's right. That is involved in seeing color. In seeing color, yes. Okay, so this no, person isn't seeing any colour whatsoever. No, but, but the area experientially involved is they're not being shown any yeah. colour, but the area involved, involved. in perceiving colour, it's lit up. So, under hypnosis, part of the visual cortex involved in perceiving colour is active. This suggests that Pelham was somehow really seeing colour. Then we looked at the brain responding to suggestion alone. Now here is a composite picture of the brain of the six people when they were not hypnotized. They're asked to add color, they're not hypnotized. Th there's no color area. There's no color area being led. There's some but other there's things being led, but not in the parts of the brain that actually respond to seeing color. This did surprise Irving. What was going on in the brain under hypnosis appeared to be different from suggestion alone. Since what they say is so similar under, under both conditions, I expect it to be very si what's happening in their brain to be very similar as, as well. Maybe a little less under, mm -hmm. without hypnosis and with hypnosis, but not the degree of difference uh, that we're getting. That to me is a surprise, I love it. But they reported seeing color almost the same as That's when they were exactly hypnotized. right. Isn't that exciting? That's amazing. And what's going on up here? Why, why is all the other stuff being Well, activated? that's a good question. One of the possibilities, yeah. one of the things that that's consistent with is that here they might be imagining color as opposed to actually seeing it. They're really thinking. They're really thinking. They're having to that's remember, it, imagine. That's exactly right. That's what's su being suggested. Now, we've only run six subjects. Mm -hmm. We've got to run maybe another 18 subjects, something mm -hmm. like that, in order to really be able to say this conclusively. But already, what you're looking at, they're meaning for results. Irving still needs to do more tests. But if the results are repeated, it would suggest that although you can achieve almost the same experience using suggestion alone, trance is doing something. This really made me want to find out what on earth trance is. So I went to see a neuroscientist with a dark past. Now an associate professor of psychiatry, Amir Raz had also trained as a magician. You're a scientist as well as a magician. Yeah, you know, it depends who you ask. Some people will tell you that I'm the best magician among the scientists, and some people will tell you, you know, that it's the other way around. But um, I am trying to bring these two things together. I'm very His unusual perspective has led him to a particular view on hypnosis. For Amir, it's all to do with what happens in our brain when someone is trying to focus our attention. Sometimes I'll go quickly, and sometimes I'll go very slowly. Okay, and your job is just to tell me where the balls are. Fair enough? Okay. Here we go. Where are the balls? One in each. One in each, okay. And you can bet your money on it, right? It's, 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 it's very simple to do, right? Where are the balls? I think they're both in there. Okay. But? 
You, you, you were right. You were right. You, you were thinking about something. Yeah, there, there was, uh, there was, there was. <laughs> let's try it again. So look, I, I take my hand down. So you're looking at it. I open. You have the element of surprise, and I throw the ball at the same time out of your line of vision. That's the magic trick. But actually, it's not a trick at all. There's, there's nothing to it. Even if you know the technique, I'm just counting on your brain, not registering things at the right time. They're all there, you know, on the floor. According to Amir, what happens under hypnosis is that your brain goes into a state of highly focused attention. You could call it a trance, but he thinks science hasn't really yet defined the term, and so it's just not helpful to use it. You see, attention and hypnosis, I mean, literally, are the same thing. And, and the way to think about it is hypnosis really is a misnomer. The word hypnosis is very confusing. Hypnosis re, you know, relates to hypnos, which is in Greek mythology, the, you know, has to do with sleep. But hypnosis, the way we talk about it, has nothing to do with sleep. It has to do with attention. It's an attentional manipulation. We know that with attention, you can actually influence cognitive processes, emotional processes, thought, and action. So as a scientist, hypnotism isn't very surprising. As a scientist, hypnosis is fascinating. Uh, then Amir made me an offer that I found myself accepting. How about me trying hypnosis? But would I be able to let go? If you try too hard, you're, you need to revise, okay? You need to let go and don't try too hard. Let things happen off their own, okay? And I'll try to help you. So play, relax, and um, don't try too hard and go to a place maybe that I haven't been to before internally. And enjoy so that's it. That's nice. And enjoy it, yeah. Right. Oh, it's very nice. It's very nice. And I'd like you to allow yourself to lose a little bit of control while you're in control. That's possible to do. Everything is being peeled off, float down like a feather. What then happened was a long and gentle process of getting me to become deeply relaxed. We can't show you the whole session because broadcasters aren't allowed to. And once you get there, just let me know that you're there by gently raising your index finger on your left hand. Good. I'm going to the kitchen. I'm taking out a lemon. One yellow lemon. One green lime. Feel it with your mouth. Feel it with your mind. And the balloon is getting bigger, pushing your hands to the side. The right arm is very, very heavy, and it's like a branch of a tree. It is a very rigid arm. I'd like you to pay attention to a mosquito. I think it might want to have a little taste of your shoulder there. I'd like for you to Remember the following cards. However, it might be difficult for you to remember these cards until I tell you, Kathy, now you can remember these cards very clearly. After an hour of listening to Amir's suggestions, I was brought around. Everything is beginning to be more and more crisp and normal. Common wakefulness is about to commence. Three to two, two, to one, and we're back in the real world. And you can open your eyes when you're ready and, and, and sit up, and yawn and stretch, and do all the things that you've been wanting to do for a while. Good morning. Hi there. <laughs> Good. Was there anything in particular that you'd like to share? Well, it felt delicious to be relaxing, and I love the Oh, falling into a warm place in fluid and supported the cloud. Really relaxing. But, and, and you know, and a part of me feels like, well, I didn't really taste any lemon or lime, and I, I didn't... I was trying... Well, I'm just a bit disappointed that I'm not a bit more imaginative. Mm -hmm. I was trying Did to imagine... Did you have some kind of an innate resistance? I think I'm quite... Um, I can be quite bloody-minded, mm -hmm. quite, and there's a bit of me, like when you told me, here are the cards, 
and you're not going to be able to remember them until I tell you. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, damn you, no, I'm going to, I'm going to remember them, right. regardless. So, so there is a bit of me that just is that just doesn't want to be compliant. Right. <laughs> um, and what were they? Well, they were the Ace of Clubs, the Seven of Diamonds, and the Three of Hearts. Right, but I, that's the way you are. I mean, clearly, you don't belong to those highly suggestible people, as regrettably, neither do I. I mean, I, I do not belong to them either. But, uh, and where are you on the media? Um, I, I would, you know, I would, I would think that I'm, I'm very much like you. So I'd been hypnotized, or as hypnotized as I could be. But at least I'd learned about what trance might be and about the power of suggestion. But did any of this mean hypnotherapy can help with real health problems? It was time to meet up with Richard, the smoking policeman. Three months ago, Richard had been a heavy smoker. Could he really have quit? I am hopeless at giving up anything, really. If I tell myself I have to give up, then I really want to have it. But, so if I were smoking 30 cigarettes a day, I would, <laughs> I'd be stuffed. So Richard, after you'd had the session, did you think you would stop? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did, I, because I completely wanted to stop. I made the mistake of, I think I went out three weeks after stopping, after being hypnotized, and that was it for me, just. That was when I uh, had my first one. But I lasted three weeks with that one, not wanting one. Yeah. Only time I really smoke is when I tend to, when I go out socialising. Good thing is I don't buy them anymore. <laughs> it <doesn't laughs> so it's me. cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's even cheaper, I'm saving money. So, three months in and he'd cut down, but he was still smoking. Apparently, most of his colleagues had given up. But what I can't tell is how much of this, if any, was down to being hypnotised. It is really hard trying to work out what bit of this might be working. Because it could have been down to the counselling they received as a part of the package. Or maybe it was just because they were really motivated. What about the case of the chocolate eater? So four months ago, Nicola was saying she didn't think she was going to eat chocolate again. But I wonder, four months is a long time not to have any chocolate. I would have had some. I couldn't have chosen a better day. Hi, Hello Dan. again. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to Nicola see you. was surrounded by thank temptation. You. Well, thank you. So, Nicola, the million dollar question. Have you had any chocolate? Yes, I have. But it was several weeks down the line, quite a few weeks down the line, and my daughter said, oh, mum, you just must try this. It was something new. and. And, and I tried it, and I thought, oh, no, what a shame. I've blown You it. know, absolutely. But later on, I thought, nothing's the same. It is not the same. It doesn't give me that lovely feeling. It wasn't lovely. It, did you taste corned beef, did it? I didn't taste corned beef, but mm. it wasn't right. And so it's, it's been your son's birthday today. Mm -hmm. There's chocolate on the cake. Yep. You could have a bit of cake, yep. have a bit of chocolate. It'd be fine. But it's too much on, though. I couldn't eat that. I eat so much less than I used to. I can eat it, but I don't want it. And it is a lovely feeling. It's sort of like being in, in control. Well, Nicola feels really positive, even though she's still eating chocolate. But anyway, her story is just one story. Scientifically, I can't draw general conclusions from this. It's time to see what real evidence there is. When I first started looking at hypnotherapy, I was just gobsmacked by the number of different things that people claimed it could treat. Dealing with guilt, impotence, compulsive lying, it's fabulous. Asthma, warts. So how do you judge what it might be worth using hypnotherapy for? The thing is, if a neighbor or a friend has tried something like hypnotherapy out, you can be so persuaded by them, can't you? You know, if it's worked for them, you think it works and works for everything, maybe. And if it hasn't worked, then you can be put off. But it's just anecdotal. You know, it doesn't amount to clinical evidence. You have to look at lots of people over a period of time in what scientists call trials. 
And it's the evidence gathered from these trials that I finally gathered together. So, what do they say about smoking? Well, even though it's really popular and lots of people swear by it, the experts who reviewed it say there's no evidence that it works any better than just advice or even no treatment at all. As for weight loss, it's just not clear whether hypnotherapy on its own really helps. There is some research, though, that says if you have hypnotherapy and some other psychological treatment, then it may help. That's interesting. But what's surprising is that for many of the conditions listed on the internet, there isn't really clear evidence one way or the other. And sadly, there's absolutely no accepted evidence that it works for breast enlargement either. In general, more trials need to be done. But in hypnotherapy, that's tricky. You know, each hypnotherapist uses a different process, a different way of relaxing people. The whole induction process is different. And they also use different types of suggestions or other psychological therapies as part of the package. It's really complicated and hard to draw general conclusions. But there do seem to be a number of conditions where hypnotherapy could really offer something. I'm off to explore two of the most striking. In Manchester, they've pioneered the use of hypnotherapy for irritable bowel syndrome. IBS is a painful social nightmare. Severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, constipation. In an NHS clinic, patients with the most severe form of IBS, who've tried all conventional treatments, are offered hypnotherapy by Professor Peter Warwell. Peter, hi. Peter Warwell. Very nice to meet you. Shall we go and have yes. a bite too? Yes, let's. Given that IBS involves the gut, I wasn't ready for his choice of lunch. Or maybe a salad? Yeah. I'll just have a plate of chips. A plate of chips? Oh, wait. <laughs> a chip butter, is that, yeah. Is that good for <laughs> innards? Uh, yes, you need to stay off healthy foods uh, with IBS. Stay off? Oh, they make it worse. About 60% of people are made worse by IBS. Right. So, so, I mean, normally I go right for the fibrous right. things. If yeah. I have IBS, I should be avoiding them. So if I see a patient in the clinic because I'm on a healthy diet, gotcha. You know, you know That's that past you the can, problem. Yeah. 25 years ago, when Peter first looked into hypnotherapy, he was a sceptic. You presumably had to learn how to hypnotise. That was one of the first stages. I mean, did you buy into all the things yeah. they were teaching you? Well, I went off on a few courses, and I, I, I must say I felt a bit of a fish out of water because there I was, a mainstream hospital physician, yeah. and I went in and there were some very wacky-looking people. And I think some people were there to learn hypnosis seriously, and I think some people needed treatment. But at the beginning, it, I felt very uncomfortable. I had to be careful about coming out of the hypnotic closet in a way because I was afraid my colleagues would think, what's he up to with all this hypnosis Well, stuff? I can imagine them. They must have thought when they found out that mm. you were, um, you'd gone quite wacky. Yeah. Peter has devised a form of hypnotherapy that encourages his patients to imagine that their gut is healthy, literally thinking the organ back into working order. OK, so just look at my finger and think about your eye. It's becoming very, very heavy. He offered to demonstrate his technique on a colleague who he'd hypnotised many times before. Deeper, 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 deeper and deeper. As you can see, the word deep works very well. Well, you didn't seem to need to do anything. No. We'll just say deep and away she goes. But Teresa does go exceptionally quickly. And speaking now, as talking, isn't going to disturb no, her? No, and she can hear what we're saying and tune in if she wants, or if she doesn't want to, she doesn't have to. It looks fantastically mm. relaxing. Mm. So you put a hand on your tummy and feel a lovely warm feeling in your tummy. Think about that warmth going right through your tummy and reaching every single part of your gut. Every part of your gut is being influenced by that warmth and relaxing. So all spasm is just being taken away from your tummy. 
and just making you feel absolutely wonderful. And you can just drone on like that, telling them nice things and, <laughs> and just... So, so tactile therapy that's is the tactile, touching her yeah. tummy and you droning yeah, on. Yeah. And another thing we do is this visualisation. So we often say to the patient, well, your gut's a bit like a river. Why don't we think of that gut becoming like your brain wants it to become, a nice, smooth, gentle flowing river over which you have total control. You are controlling your gut rather than your gut controlling. You keep on droning on about these repetitive things, you know. It's almost brainwashing them, isn't it? Well, it? Yes, what I think, presumably this idea of control mm. is absolutely key. Mm. Yes, you have a bit of a paradox because it looks so the person's under your control and then you're telling them they're going to be in control. And there's something about hypnosis, they've got to trust you, obviously, and they go into this state where they are suggestible. You're suggesting they're going to take control. But once you start going into that process, they do take control. It seems amazing that something so simple could be so powerful. But Peter is achieving some remarkable results in people with the most severe forms of IBS. We don't know if it can help all sufferers. Yeah, he just, he's just got masses of humanity. He really cares about this. But he's still being as rigorous a scientist as he possibly can. Peter was great, although nothing could have prepared me for my next stop in Scotland. I was here to meet a dentist who'd been using hypnotherapy to reduce the pain of treatment. That morning, he'd be doing something not even he had done before. Teeth extraction, an implant placement with no conventional anaesthetic, just hypnosis. Imagine waking up in the morning, having had quite a sleepless night, thinking, some bloke is gonna rip my teeth out and I'm gonna be hypnotized, it's not gonna hurt. It's just remarkable. <coughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it's not me. It was Amanda. She'd only had five hours of hypnosis to prepare her for this morning. But today, she'd have her two front teeth removed and two implants inserted. Why did you want to have hypnosis rather than anaesthetic? What well, made you think that? Um, I mean, I just do ordinary things, you know, go to work, come home, go for a walk, you know, and it's just doing something like this. Ordinary people can just do something like extraordinary. And I thought, Ken, I'll give that a go and see if I can do that. Good morning, Mandy. How are you doing? Oh, thank Good you. Good to see you. And you come, and you come. Have a Mike seat Gow is Mandy's dentist Excellent. and so hypnotherapist. That morning, Mandy had taken a couple of ibuprofen. I can tell you, they'd make a minimal difference to what you're about to see. Perfect. Excellent. Good stuff. And I want you to give yourself that signal again, mm -hmm. that anchor, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to reaccess those positive feelings, the, the feeling relaxed and positive, mm -hmm. okay? Mandy's anchor, Excellent. a mere handshake, seemed to send her off. Today, the procedure that's happening is to improve the health, improve the function, improve the appearance of the body, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, You'd be surprised by how easy you find the procedure today because... Mike spent about half good. an hour helping Mandy to focus and suggesting that she shouldn't expect pain. Then, a different sort of hand signal. And suddenly, it all felt very real. It's relaxing, deeply into the chair. I've been tucked in, safe, to be entirely comfortable. One way of learning how to do this is to imagine a comfort dial. Visualising in your mind's eye now this comfort dial, you're very easily able just to turn the dial down, aren't you? You can take this pad in your hand and hold on to this pen. I want you to think about that dial now and just write down the number that you can see and feel the comfort dial is at right now. That's right, a zero, completely comfortable. If the number got to six, Amanda would be given a dose of local anaesthetic. Noticing just how far up in the mouth, the nose, the lip. They were going to monitor Mandy's pulse throughout. So was I. Pressure you can 
Write down another number there. It's Before right long, to the dentist started left, to loosen the tooth. It was about to get grim. Zero. You can zero in on the comfortable sensation and just write down another wee number there. A zero. Completely comfortable. Comfortable pressure. Enjoy relaxing on the beach. While Mike was innocently talking about a beach, out came the first tooth. Feeling relaxed and calm. Just write down the number the dial is at right now. A zero. A How could she write a zero? Comfortable sensations as you walk along the beach. Perhaps you have your shoes off and you can notice that the sand between your toes is wet, or whether the sand is dry and warm and fluffy. And as you feel the movement and the pressure, you can allow the altered sensations, the feelings of comfort. So turning the dial down, just writing down a wee number for me there. A two, okay, turning that two down, because it's right to turn down the number two zero. Just write down the number again now, Where, where's the dial at now? A one, and you can turn the dial from a two. That was hard to enough to watch, but then came the drill. Quite a satisfying feeling to know that you can control the sensation. Choosing at any time, just to write down which number feels right. A one. This was all taking a long time, sun. and her pulse hadn't yeah, changed. Drift away, separating Mine sure had. From body. Enjoying this perfect day at the beach, the perfect weather, enjoying the way... I hoped Mandy was really on the beach. The I certainly wasn't. Comfortable one, because it's right for one to feel comfortable. And it's interesting that there are so many colours and so many different shades in these grains of sand. I just continue to relax while I speak to Cathy. Mandy's pulse has stayed incredibly low. Mm. I mean, my pulse was high. Because she's relaxed. Yeah. Well, mm. comfort she really is in a comfortable place. Yeah. And you can demonstrate that by, uh, again, Mandy, if you just write down the number that's on the dial right now, it's a zero, completely comfortable. Knowing that when the Finally, one and a half hours later, we were almost done. The area is feeling f functional and healthy again, and the smile will be perfectly complete. I felt utterly drained. What about Mandy? They come back into this room so that you can feel more and more alert, more and more awake. That's right, open your eyes, feel wide awake, alert. Fantastic, well done, very well done. Great. Good, so I shall sit your chair up there. Your pulse is now higher than it's been the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your pulse oh, It's up at 82 now. There's loads 82. of people in the room. Yeah, 86. What was the, actually, out of interest, what was the highest number recorded? It was, I think a, it was three. a three. I thought my pain would be way up high, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was quite surprised that um, it wasn't as sore as what I expected. And what, what was the worst thing? Um, just, I think they must have been getting kind of drilled in. It was just that mm -hmm. kind of, kind of, kind of is it is it kind of messy? No, not no. at all. And, and do you remember everything? Uh huh. Aye. And, and then I, 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 I mean, you can hear things yeah, like going about, about, but I actually think you'd gone away. <laughs> That's amazing. And how does that feel now? Good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Deeply impressive. You look like you were in a more comfortable place than I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. I couldn't quite believe they were really pulling his teeth out. What was going on? Now, one possibility, and some scientists would say this was the most likely explanation, is that Mandy is experiencing something called the placebo effect. Now, I think this is quite an amazing phenomenon. 
it says that if you just tell somebody they're going to experience less pain with a particular treatment, even if you give them a dummy pill or a dummy treatment, they actually feel less pain. It's just the act of telling them and their belief that makes it work. Could this explain what was happening with Mandy? I went to Montreal to meet someone who might have some answers. <laughs> Professor Pierre Rainville is a world expert on pain and hypnosis. The first question I wanted to ask was, was he as amazed as I was? What we're saying is that the words of another person are able to change what's going on in our brain. Of course. And profoundly affect yes. our physiology. Right, yes. But of course, every time we interact, we, we're changing our brain and... But changing how much pain I make, how much pain this well, body yeah. is in, but, uh, seems... But of course, most of what you know, our body does is not mm. under our willful control. Pierre's work has already shown that hypnosis can reduce pain in almost anyone. But he wanted to know how. He's receiving 48. He's in the process of conducting a major experiment to look at this. Just uh, relax and don't move. What Pierre is trying to find out is this. Is hypnotherapy, when applied for pain relief, analgesia, just the same as the placebo effect? Mm -hmm. Or is it doing something different? He's receiving 48 degrees. So, so what are you trying to tell the difference between? What's your... Well, we know that both hypnotic analgesia and placebo analgesia are two real analgesic procedures. Okay, so just believing or being conditioned to believe that something's going to work genuinely affects right. your experience of pain. Exactly. We know that's the case and we know with that, both that of these. This also decreases the pain-related responses in the brain. Now the, now the question that we're able to address with this study is whether the mechanisms that are involved in inducing the placebo effect or inducing the hypnosis, hypnotic analgesic effect, whether those mechanisms are exactly the same or whether there are different pathways in the brain that might induce some true analgesic effects. So I will start with the analgesic cream. For the placebo part of the test, people's skin was coated with what they were told was a pain-numbing cream. In fact, it does absolutely nothing. Then, their brains were scanned before and while a painful stimulus was applied. And how much does it hurt? Well, you can try it. Oh, great, OK. You have to try it. I have you to don't try. have to. Well, but be interesting. Yeah. Every, every student in my lab would go through this before running their own study. Yeah, it's only fun. Though, actually, I wimped out of that one. Your legs are feeling heavy, heavy and relaxed. To see the effect Your of hypnosis, the same subject would be hypnotized and given a series of suggestions telling them that they would not feel pain. Again, the brains would be scanned and the painful stimulus applied. So we're telling him when he hears this countdown, his leg will become more and more numb and like it if it was anesthetized. We're expecting that the subject is going to report less pain in this condition. And in the meantime, you're measuring what's happening exactly. in his brain. Right. Did she walk off? An enormous amount of analysis had been done over the last three months. Pierre promised to give me a first peek at the findings the next morning. Hi. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, very good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. And how's it looking? Well, we've done some analyses. Uh, Pierre was sounding days. cautious as the team had literally been working through the night. They had results to show how the brain responded just before the pain stimulus was given. And Jenny's been up all night, right? Yeah, Jenny's been working very hard on this. This would be the first indication to see if the brain responded to pain under hypnosis the same way it responded under placebo. Right, so these maps are showing brain activity in anticipation of the pain. Okay, so this is 
The expectation. Right. This is the expectation, and this might reveal areas that trigger the analgesic effect. Mm -hmm. And here in the hypnotic analgesic condition, we find some stronger activation in some part of the prefrontal cortex. And in the analgesic condition in the placebo study, we find another area that's much more dorsal in the frontal cortex. Okay, so just here, right. which is kind of about here right. on my brain, right. that's the hypnotic area exactly. that's been more activated. And just here, which is, which is higher up, right. that's the bit that's associated with the placebo control. So they're very different areas. Right. This is consistent with the idea that different processes are involved, different mm -hmm. mechanisms are involved in triggering the analgesic response in response to a placebo or in response to hypnotic suggestions. It's early days, but it may be that hypnosis really does work in a different way from the placebo. Not yet. With the placebo. <gasps> I'd come to Montreal after seeing a stunning example of pain control, wanting to know how this could be happening. I'm leaving with a tantalising glimpse that hypnosis might have its own particular way of changing how we respond to pain. I didn't imagine it was going to be as, um, as powerful as, as it's been. Watching her pain could be controlled was something I'll never forget. I felt totally sick. I remember thinking, don't faint, don't faint, Kathy. <laughs> Just look away for a while. Look away, because then, um, then you might not be sick. It's been a long journey, but at the end of it, I've seen two powerful examples where hypnotherapy may have a place in medicine. As for me now, where am I? You know, I've felt quite disappointed about not being very hypnotizable. You know, it would have been much more interesting to have had, oh, a more full experience. And I think that now I'd be able to I'd be more playful about it. You know, I'd be able to, you know, just try to really go for it and not see it as a bit of a control fight. But the problem has always been partly that you've been here with me. You know, there's been a camera crew and people watching. So I'm afraid I have to do it alone now. And it gives me a chance. It will really give me a chance oh, to experience it fully. Because I would so like, I would so like to, you know, be able to have the ability. I've got an appointment. Mike McCoy, the hypnotist I met in Belfast, has offered to try and hypnotise me. Well, hello again. <laughs> Very nice to see you. Seth, so to do the slower. It's, that's it, that's it. For a free booklet about the topics featured in this series and more about Open University programmes on the BBC, call 0870 900 0311 or go to open2.net. Flexology is the alternative therapy next Monday at the same time, 9 o'clock, here on BBC Two. The Grumpies have a few words to say about the British class system next here on BBC Two. While on Radio 5 Live, join Richard Bacon for lively and entertaining chat on the day's big stories.